Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? Travis and Susie here from the Wolf Hunters. We got a reaction video for you. We got this link right here. You can find that link in the description box below the video to request your own personal reaction. Today's video is brought to you by Gracchus Wainwright. Gracchus Bringing us tie knots for beginners by the Gentleman's Gazette. Gracchus Wainwright says, Howdy. He's your boy Gracchus here to close another gap. I haven't seen an educational video on your channel that has to do with fashion yet. Ooh. So here's one I want to share. I came across this very useful channel a while back that shows men how to become more gentlemanly. Okay. I'm not Wait, are you trying to say something? I'm not ashamed to admit that I refer to this video for formal events where I'm expected to pull up my big boy britches. I hope y'all, especially Travis... Find this video as inspiring as I did. Have a nice day now, you hear? All right. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh. oh. Okay, hang on a second. Let's go back for a minute. Let's go. I got to go to the closet real quick. Uh, all right. I got it. I used to have like hundreds of ties. Hundreds. Now I only have one tie. I got rid of all of them. All right. Because Travis only wears a tie to a wedding or a funeral. Yeah, and that happens like once every five years. So, okay. So I got my my tie. So I'm gonna learn. I only know the, the like the the basic tie. You know what I mean? But let's see. I'm excited for this actually. Let's see if I can actually. Welcome learn. back to the. Let's see if I could learn. Something. I think there's. It says three tie knots. Oh, uh, like and subscribe. Okay. Let's do it. Gentlemen's Gazette. In today's video, we'll show you how to tie the three easiest tie knots, how to combine them with the right type of shirt collar, no matter if you use a knit tie, a thin tie, or very thick tie. Those are interesting ties. The, the tie knot tie. is a visual focal point in your outfit, trying to put the other person's eyes focusing on your face. Because of that, it's important to know how to tie a right tie knot that works well for your face so it flatters your Oh, appearance. okay. You're just getting started with tie about... knots or if you need a little refresher because you I not... didn't realize there was a connection of the tie to your face. I'm just saying. Did you know that? No. Huh. Coming interview, this video is for you. We'll cover the foreign hand knot, the oriental knot, as well as the Kelvin knot. I wear these three tie knots regularly, but which tie knot to choose depends on what kind of shirt you have and what kind of tie you have. So let's figure out how to choose the right tie knot for the tie and the shirt color you have. First, Reminds I would start Michael. with the shirt style and the collar because once you have that, it's easy to choose an accompanying tie knot because the tie knot is something that's up to you versus the shirt collar is something that you have and you can just change. Think about the shirt collar as a partner to your tie knot and the tie knot is flexible, the shirt collar is not. That being said, for example, if you have a really large Windsor knot with a classic collar, it just looks weird. Likewise, if you wear an oriental sure. knot or a foreign hand knot with a super spread collar, huh. it looks off too because you see a lot of the tie band on the That's side of the true. knot. Yeah. Now on the flip side, if you want your tie knot to look good with your collar, you have to make sure that the knot fills out the space the that is ratio. left in between the collar. Ideally, you should just see the knot. There should not be any excess band that is visible on the side. Likewise, the knot shouldn't be so big that All right. it's part So, the good news is this is very educational and it's teaching me something I never knew before. But now, the problem is, I feel like I'm going to look at other people. And judge and them. <laughs> silently judge them. No, not cruelly, but like, oh, like I can now see that tie is wrong or that thing is showing on the side or whatever. All right, anyway. Partially covered up by your shirt collar. Now, a little bit of cover up is okay, if but if you have a huge cover up, it just looks weird. 
So in today's video, I picked a medium spread collar shirt and I chose a Calvin knot with a medium thick tie. You can see the tie knot ends just underneath the collar, which is ideal because it fills out the space without being overlapped too much. The tie you choose will have a huge impact on how your knot looks. If you choose a thinner tie, you will get a thinner knot. A thicker tie will result in a thicker or bigger knot. Of course, that's not the end of it. It also depends on what type of tie knot you choose. So a thin tie paired with an oriental knot will yield a very tiny tie knot. On the other hand, if you have a medium thick tie, maybe you go with a Kelvin one because you go with a loop once around, which makes your knot a little bigger, but it's all about keeping the balance. As you can see, there's no absolute right or wrong. There's just the right size tie knot for your shirt collar. As you build up a shirt wardrobe over time, you will understand what type of a knot size you need for each shirt collar, and then you can pick the right tie size and maybe one day you wanna wear a double windsor, other days you wanna wear a four in hand, and so you can grab the right tie at the right time. So now that you know how the shirt collar, the tie I've thickness, the tie knot work things. together, let's take a look at the three easiest tie knots, starting with the oriental. In general, I would say get a more classic collar with a medium spread, definitely not a wide spread, because it's a very small knot. Because of that, it's also great to be worn with a collar pin or a collar clip, because it doesn't take up too much space. First, the slimmer end has to be near your right side. The wide end has to yeah. be near your left side. Okay. Position the wide end so it's much longer than the short end. Typically for me, it means the short end ends about a hand width above my pants waistband. Now, cross the slim end over the wide end with the seam facing up. Pinch the intersection of Hold the two on. sides. What was it, the slim end? Over, but with the seam facing up. So like that, or I gotta flip the whole thing. I don't know, man. I don't like upside down. That's too short now, though. Uh, there. All right. Okay, put it over okay. now. With your left index finger and thumb, fold the wider end over the intersection and your pinched fingers. Wrap it around and pull it snug. Now take the wide end and insert it between the gap between your collar and the tie. No. Pull it through. Up in here. What? Up in here. This? That's what I was gonna do. Oh, it was? Yeah. That's not what it looked like you were doing. This is like, I think what I normally do. It's upside except, down though. Except I don't do it this way. I do it not with this facing this way. But let's just see. And then insert the tip of the wide end into the top layer of the knot. Hold the knot while you pull it all the way through gently. Before finally tightening the knot, make sure there's a little pinch of... What I don't understand is why it was facing in that direction originally, instead of... He definitely spun it while he pulled it down in there. Nope. I mean like before it was that tight. <laughs> okay. So like, if I was to do it without having it flip like that. Right. Okay. Like that, right? That. And down the middle. Right. Okay. That's how you usually do it. Okay, what am I missing here? Oh, you said pull this up? Is that right? It says make sure there's a little pinch of fabric on the top. Okay, hold on. I think this is where we're at so far. A fabric on top of the long part of the tie so you get a dimple. What's a tie dimple? It's a little pinch in your tie that is an intentional crease. It's there oh, because on the it breaks the light and makes it look elegant in a certain way, highlighting the non-symmetrical nature of your tie knot and the nonchalance of your outfit. Once the knot is tied, it's just a dimple, so you like it, and now it's time to pull up the knot. Just pull on the shorter end with your right hand while holding the tie knot with your left hand. Some people like to put the slim end through a keeper. Personally, I prefer not to do that because it's a little more casually elegant that way. Yeah. Of course, if you want, you can also wear a tie bar with it. That way, your tie 
stays straight all day. Next up, let's look at a four in hand knot. It, had the it is there. probably one of my favorite knots because my it's turn. asymmetrical and it's very simple to tie. So it works with most medium thick and thicker ties. It's also my knot of choice for knit ties because anything bigger is Never just seen too a dramatic yeah. and big. Even though there are dozens of possible tie knots out there, the four in hand is probably the most popular around the world. Now, it is very similar to an oriental, but it starts with a seam side facing down towards That's your chest you or neck. Just like the oriental, uh, it's also great for collar pins and collar clips because it's very small too. First, drape the tie around your neck with the wide end on the left side and the thin end on your right side. Again, you wanna adjust the length so the slim end is shorter. Typically, it ends about a hand width above my pants waistband. Now, cross the wide end over the slim end with a seam facing towards your chest. Now, pinch the intersection, wrap the wider end once around 360 degrees. This will form an opening over your left index finger. Now you can pull the wide end from behind, pull it all the way through. And then put it through that hole you just created. Now with your right index finger and thumb, hold the knot and with your left hand, pull the wide end through that little knot. Before finally tightening the knot, pinch the top part so you oh, get that, that desired the dimple. Did, right? Then pull the knot tight yeah, and ultimately uh, hold so it the with your wrong. left hand and with your right hand, pull in the slimmer end and wiggle it up I'll have to so go it back fits and try neatly it. in the desired yeah, color the space. You don't want it to be more on one side or on the other. You want it right in the middle so it's not overlapped and it looks neat. Again, this is an asymmetrical oh. knot, so depending on the tie you have, it may look more asymmetrical, but it's desired. That's part of the look. The yes. third tie knot is the Calvin Yours knot. It's basically an oriental knot that's more voluminous because How do you, you undo wrap it? the tie around once more. Hmm? How do you get it off? Thanks. Okay. All right. No soda. more, thus giving you a bigger knot. Again, drape the tie around your neck with the wider end on your left, the shorter end on your right. Again, adjust the length so the slimmer end is about a hand width above your pants waistband. Cross the slim end over the wide end and pinch it with wait, wait, wait. your index finger. Fold the wider end. He's doing the thing again where it's upside down. Upside down. That's where I messed up the first time as, as I... As you, you strayed the course. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's is it skinny over? Let's let's roll. Nope, on. wide. Okay, ready. The slim end over the wide end and slim pinch end it over with the wide your end. index finger. Okay. Fold the wider end over the intersection of your pinched fingers okay. and go once around and pull it really tight. Oh, really tight. Now once again, pinch oh. that part with your thumb and index finger of your left hand. Now wrap the wide end around once more come through the back and pull it up gently. Now you take the wider end and you stuff it through the hole you just created. And pull it down. You do that while you have your left hand holding the knot and with your right hand, you pull on the wider end and pull it through. It's important that you pull that wide end through just that one loop not that double loop, otherwise your knot might look odd because there will be two layers yeah, right. that can be seen. Now it's the same thing as before, make sure there's a little crease in the end so you get that desired dimple and then once the knot is tight, pull it up. Once the tie is fully tied, you ideally want the wide end and the slim end to be exactly the same length, ending at about the middle of your belt buckle. Sometimes it can be a little shorter, sometimes it can be a little longer. Now, if you're a tall guy, and Looks you're a long torso, a you need a too. longer tie. If you're a shorter gentleman, you need a shorter tie. We at Fort Belvedere understand that different men need different 
tie lengths. And so all of our threefold ties come in short, regular, and long, so you can find the right tie for your needs. All the ties we use in this video today can be purchased in our shop here, Ooh. where we also have a lot Dang. of other ties. If you want to learn more about right the there. hallmarks of a quality tie, please check out this video here. If you want to learn how to store a tie, you can check out this one. All right, now that you know the three easiest tie knots and you understand how you have to pair them with your collar shape, you're ready to go to a cocktail night, to go. a We're ready. business interview, Where are we going? or just ready. any other occasion where a tie is required. Or are we going to go to the In orchestra. today's video, I'm wearing a white Symphony. dress shirt with a medium to classic spread collar. I'm combining it with an interesting tie in turquoise and orange with a diamond pattern that is printed by Fort Belvedere, which you can find in the shop here. It's tied with a Kelvin knot, which perfectly fills out that space of my collar. It's then paired with a vintage cashmere blazer from Sulka. It is navy, has patch pockets, and white mother of pearl buttons. The pocket square picks up the white color of the dress shirt and has a navy blue X or cross stitch, which ties the whole outfit together, but highlighting the handwork with that unusual cross stitch. It's also from nice. Fort Belvedere. You can find it in our shop here. The pants are in a gray Prince of Wales check with a red over plaid, their vintage polo, and to pick up the red color of the tie. My shoes are burgundy or oxblood penny loafers, and I'm combining them with a burgundy red belt I with a like silver palladium plated buckle because it goes well with the red silver combination of my ring. <laughs> That was cool. That was a I good like idea. Learning stuff that like was that. awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for that one. Um, Gracchus Wainwright, we appreciate you. Um, uh, guys, if you want to request your own personal reaction video, find that link in the description box below. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And Stay happy tuned. Tie tying. Let me know your favorite tie knot. Love you guys so Bye. much. We'll see you next time. Bye.